Alright, this is video two of two of King Snake Care. This is going to be all about housing your king and what you can do to provide the best care that you can for your snake. Alright, now for those of you that have been watching my video, you know that this is Cali, the California albino striped king. Uh, she's actually starting to get on the move here. She woke up a little bit ago, so uh, she's just starting to get a little bit fired up. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about is housing your ca uh, snake. Hatchlings can be in 10 gallons, and let me just make a quick note that this is not necessary. Um, you really don't need to put them in this type of tank, so uh, it's pretty big. Now a 10 gallon looks more like this. Just give you a quick example. Um, and there's no reptile in here, I just use it for cricket breeding. And I'll try to make a video about that later, but if you get up close you can see that um, it's good for hatchling size, but definitely nothing larger than that. Um, I suggest putting sub-adults in about 20 gallon tanks. You can make that long or tall, by the way. Um, kings are climbers, so if you put them in tall cages, that's even better than a long cage because they do love to climb. Now, adults, I suggest giving them nothing less than a 40 to 60 gallon tank. Um, a lot of people will disagree with that and have different methods, but my reason for it is because if you remember me saying how colubrids only have their right lung working, um, one disadvantage that they actually have is that they can't sit coiled up all day. Um, they do have to stretch out their body, and if they can't stretch it out and they live in really confined spaces, it does make them more prone to getting respiratory infections. So please do make sure that your snake can at least stretch out its body within its own home. Alright, the next thing that we're going to talk about is heat. Heat is really easy for these snakes. Um, like, actually, you really don't even need a light if you don't want a light. And when I mean light, I mean, like, a bright light. Um, they do need some source of heat, though. Uh, they need, they, you can use a ceramic heat bulb, and ceramic heat bulbs are good because they don't produce any light. They just produce heat, and kings like them because they don't irritate their eyes. I'd actually like to get one and replace it with uh, my heat bulb, but it'd have to be pretty big. So uh, what I actually have, you can get this too, is a uh, red nighttime bulb. And these are fine. You can actually use this by itself if you feel that your tank is warm enough. So um, she has that. And you also want to make sure that you have a cool and warm side of the tank. Uh, this right here would be her warm half of her cage. And then right down here is the cool side. And just like I said, she's about to go down to the cool side. So that's as far as heat goes. Next we're going to talk about humidity. Um, these snakes have very, very low humidity requirements compared to some like uh, green tree pythons who need a lot of humidity. So these are really easy and actually you don't want to have too much humidity. So just hear me out on this. The only source of humidity that a, um, a king snake is going to need is its water bowl. You can actually keep their tank at around 50 percent, 50 to 55 percent I would say is the best humidity range for them. Um, you can go to 50 to six, uh, 58 to 60 percent, but I really don't recommend it. So that's all that they need. Um, so next we can talk about um, like structures that you can put in the tank and special furnishings that they need. Are you really trying to get out? It's not going to work, sister. Sorry. Um, Alright, so the main thing that kings need uh, more than anything else other than their water bowl is, oh, hello, is a hide. Hides are absolutely essential. Uh, they're very secretive snakes, and they will often spend their day just coiled up in their hide, especially if they are new to your home or new to you. So if, you know, that helps to de-stress them. So I think it's absolutely essential to have uh, some form of a hide for them so that they can just keep their stress level down. You should have one or more climbing branches. Um, the reason for me having this one right here is so that she has one on the, uh, has a place to rest on the cool side. 
and a place to rest on the warm side because she can't really rest on this right here. It's not really um, a good resting spot. So um, the main things that they really need as far as furnishings go are at least one climbing branch, at least one hide, and at least one large water bowl that they can soak in. Uh, they will they will poop in here. Um, she rarely does, but a lot of kings will. And they also like to shed. I mean, they also like to um, soak in here pre-shed. But um, I catch her doing it a lot, even when she's not in shed. So make sure that you do provide that. Um, next, why don't we cover substrate? Uh, there are plenty of substrates that you can use, but first just let me uh, tell you what you should not use as far as substrates go. Uh, do not use cedar or redwood shavings. Uh, they're pretty toxic to these kinds of snakes. And another thing not to use are pine shavings. I really don't know if pine shavings have been proved to be toxic but I know that there's a chance that they are and so you should never take that chance um, so do not buy pine shavings for kings now um, the best thing to use when you first get your snake in the house would be to use paper towels to, um, and the reason I say that is because if your snake does have mites or um, any type of bacteria a bacterial infection or um, just any type of parasite it's good to keep them on there so that when they do defecate, you can easily clean it. And um, if they're on any type of, you know, like if you're trying to get the mites off, uh, paper towels are always the best because the mites can easily get in this type of substrate and whatnot. So paper towels, I think, are always a must when you have a new animal until you're absolutely sure that it has no type of um, parasites and whatnot. All right, so... I use play sand for mine, and um, it's clean play sand, and what I do is when I um, am about to put it in her tank, I just take it and rinse it, and then I dry it, and once it's all dry, I put it in here. I do recommend that you um, rinse your play sand before you put it in the tank. Uh, you can also use aspen shavings. Aspen shavings are fine, and um, you can use cypress mulch if you must. But the reason that I don't recommend it is because cypress mulch does lock in a lot of humidity, so you probably don't want that to happen. Um, make sure that you give your king snake 7 to 10 days before you handle it for the first time. A lot of people say not to try to feed on the first day because it will cause them stress or something like that. But you know what? If your snake eats on the first day, that doesn't cause them stress at all. It actually means that they're willing to eat and that they're okay. So if you must, go ahead and feed them. Um, I personally give it like a day or two before I try to feed them. But if you want to feed on the first day, it causes them no harm. It really it hurts them in no way whatsoever. Um, it's also good to just make sure within the first uh, 7 to 10 days of their home that they're comfortable. So thank you for watching, guys. This is Ms. Hizzy Fit.